Kia ora, welcome. My name is Maria and I'm here to talk to you about the flora and fauna native to New Zealand. More specifically, I'm about to talk to you about the Draco Philum, Beech Tree, Bell Bird and Hamilton's Frog. Dracophyllum is up first for flora. The Dracophyllum is a genus in the family Aracaceae, with 61 species and two varieties. The Dracophyllum is a shrub which can grow between 30 to 100 centimetres tall, though a 200 centimetre reach has been recorded. It lives on the coastal and alpine forests. Other obvious features of the Dracophyllum include 1. The striking red leaves introduced by the winter cold. 2. The patterned non-flaking bark. and 3 a young tree will have a cluster of downward curved leaves. If you come across a dracophyllum, I highly recommend stopping to admire the beauty as it is such a unique shrub. Our other flora is the beech tree. There are four different types, the mountain beech, silver beech, red beech and hard beech. The beech trees like to live in the higher wetter conditions, so it lives on the lowland. Beech trees would generally seed every four to five years, but if a cool summer followed by a warm one were to happen, this would create a mess. A mess is where an intense and widespread flowering will happen. The seeds are in the form of small wing nuts, which will fall in autumn. During a heavy seed fall, it can be about 50 million seeds, which is about 250 kgs per hectare. When the seeds fall, they will blow in the air for about a few metres, then drop, causing new shrubs to grow, later continuing into fully grown trees. A beech tree can grow over 30 metres tall, and can live for more than 3,000 years. Now I think that's amazing. Our first fauna is the bowbird. Bowbirds live in the native bush all over New Zealand, even on the offshore islands. Bowbirds are often spotted by their song. They have three distinct songs, which they can sing, but it varies depending on where they are from. The population of bowbirds went down drastically in the 1860s to 1880s. This is when the rats and stoats were introduced to New Zealand who hunted the birds. Luckily, the numbers started increasing in the 1940s and today the bowbird is considered least concerned on the third classification line. This is amazing. When nesting in the forest and scrub habitats from late August to January, the birds won't travel far from the nest. This means they need to have a good source of food, which for them can be fruit, honeydew and many insects. However, outside of breeding season, they may travel many kilometres to feed, especially the males. Here are some videos I took at Craigie Burns. Take a moment to listen to how the birds sing and watch how the bowbird flies. The last fauna topic I'll be covering is the Hamilton frog. This frog once lived throughout the lower North Island and the upper South Island but now it only lives on a small, rocky, moist and grassy area, which is mammal-free, Stephens Island in the Cook Strait. The Hamilton frog has been protected since 1921, and today the frog is considered nationally critical, which is sad considering it is New Zealand's largest frog. The males reach a total length of up to 43 millimetres, and the females are larger at 52 millimetres. They are mostly brown, but there has been proof of some green, a single stripe runs along each side of the head and through the eye. There is no webbing in between the hind toes and fingers, and the frog is very hard to find as it camouflages by being nocturnal and does not croak. The frogs do not go into a tadpole stage, but instead they develop in the egg. Throughout a frog's lifetime, which is 10 to 11 years, they will eat fruit flies, small crickets, moths, and springtails. Thank you for staying. I hope you have enjoyed learning about our country's flora and fauna. I hope this has opened up your eyes to the beautiful backyard we have access to. You never know, next time you're out in the bush, you may be surprised. Have a look around. You may see some of the topics I have talked to you about today.